Hello and welcome to another PyMol Quickie with me, Dr. Ross. Today we will look at how to display electron density in PyMol using both the GUI and the command line. As always, you can expand the description for the video timings and the list of the commands, and also please like and subscribe for new content. Hello and welcome to this PyMol Quickie on displaying electron density. Uh, in order to make this quick, you can skip this introduction by going to the timings and the descriptions and getting straight to it. But I thought I'd give you uh, a very brief description on the ele electron density and some resources to have a look at. So most of the electron density that we have in the PDB comes from X-ray crystallography. And of course, uh, we get similar data as well from uh, cryo-electron microscopy. Essentially, what we do is we grow protein crystals, we shoot X-rays through them, we use a computer to uh, convert that diffraction pattern into an electron density uh, map such as this and then we model our protein into that map and continue to refine uh, the uh, confidence of that map based on the structure that we've put into uh, put into that density and obviously you know we do this in a lab and here is an idea of us getting a diffraction pattern from the x-ray beam here hitting the crystal and these diffraction patterns. So that's what we're actually looking at is a computed map of the electron density. If you go into the PyMol wiki you can see that we can display these things called CCP4 maps. What we'll be doing is uh, bringing them up using this fetch command and then using this file type here and we'll be fetching them in PyMol straight from the PDB and there are resources on the PyMol wiki here where you can uh, that you can have a look through uh, mainly what we'll be using is the isomesh command so we'll go through that and of course there are some good tutorials uh, available online which I've given you some links for uh, which go through ag again what is a diffraction pattern uh, how to view it, where to get the data from, and how to see it in PyMol. But of course, we'll be going through that ourselves as well. Um, okay, thanks very much. So, how do we load electron density uh, into PyMol using the GUI? Well, the short answer is uh, it's not particularly easy. What you can do is you can go to the PDB uh, website and you can download electron density from there stick it into a file and then you can uh, just go into your file menu or you can drag the electron density in but to be honest there's no point in doing that as with when we want to display a PDB we can just use our fetch command so there we go we can fetch our PDB uh, nice and easily and similarly when we're when we want to get an electron density map we can also just use the fetch command but first what we'll do is we'll clean up our PDB as using some of these standard commands which hopefully you've seen before. Uh, this time what I've done is I've took away the cartoon and just left the representation as sticks and this is because we're going to be looking at the electron density and there's no point in having the cartoon models there and not showing the backbone structures because there'd be sections of density that aren't represented then by the atoms that we're interested in looking at so the sticks is a more appropriate view when looking at the electron density. So then we can input our electron density just by adding this little guy here type equals 2FOFC at the end of our fetch command and that when we hit that will bring in a new object here you can see to 2F67 uh, underscore 2FOFC now that object has nothing on it when we click on, when we click on it and that's because it's a density map so what we need to do is we need to contour that density in such a way that we can we can look at various different levels of it so in order to do that we need to go into our into our action menu and into our mesh so here is our object action mesh and what we can do is make a mesh at level one now that mesh comes in white so what we'll do and you can see it's created a new object here saying the mesh object so what we can do is maybe we'll we'll color it blue and then on our mesh object also we can just rename that and call it mesh one so that we know what level that mesh is at now for example now that we've renamed this we can create a second mesh object you'll need to rename it if you want to create a second mesh as the first mesh comes in at the same name 
and it will start confusing Pymol and it will overwrite your old one if you haven't renamed it. So here what we'll do is we'll make that second uh, mesh magenta and just for the sake of completeness we'll rename that into mesh 2 as well. So these are uh, two different levels of meshes here and you can see them. Um, and if we zoom into a, an area of some interest here, this is a small molecule uh, bound to the protein. The protein is nucleoside 2-deoxyribozyl transferase, which is responsible for nucleotide uh, recycling in uh, a bunch of parasites such as Trypanosoma brucei. Um, so here we can see at a sigma level of 1, our small molecule which is uh, bound into our protein here is, is quite obvious by that electron density. However, at a sigma value of 2, it's not so obvious that the, that the small molecule is there. But you can also see that the protein backbone is fully rendered at a sigma level of, of 2 there. And, that's, and, and a sigma value of 2 is often the um, contour density that crystallographers will build proteins in programs such as COOT. Um, however, sometimes it is a good idea to look at uh, the lower resolution, or well not lower resolution, sorry, but the uh, the lower sigma values there, in order to to um, see less well defined um, positions of atoms. And so there we go. So we can now take a picture. You can, of course, just take a picture using draw draw button here. Let's just do draw. There we go. And now you can take a picture of that. Obviously, you might want to do a, a nice ray. Now, the difference between the ray and the draw, you get much chunkier mesh lines when you're doing the ray. So often what people like to do is to redefine those mesh lines uh, to be thinner. And that way, when you come to ray, back ray, now that we've redefined those mesh lines, uh, they should be a little nicer to look at in the final RAID, fim uh, RAID image there. All right, so there we go. Uh, visualizing electron density using the GUI. OK, so we've learned how to use the GUI. How about just using the command line in order to, um, to visualize our electron density? Well, we're going to use some of the same commands that we used before. This time what we're also going to do is we're going to open up something called a difference map. So what we looked at before was a density map, which shows an agreement between the electron density computed from the X-ray crystallography diffraction pattern, the agreement of that with the position of the atoms in space. The difference map shows disagreements between the electron density and the atoms that we've modelled in space. And what we'll do is we'll set it up so that we get a green contour where we are missing density and a red contour where there is too much density. We'll set those at some uh, reasonable parameters there. And then we'll also go through how to, how to carve uh, away our electron density because if you notice when we did the GUI version you could see that there was all this crowding of electron density all over the place and that gets a lot for your eyes to have to consider. So let's bring in our molecule, make some alterations to it. We'll just say show sticks is everything actually. Uh, oh in fact we'll say as sticks and remove that cartoon view. We can bring in our electron density uh, map here and we can bring in the difference map, which instead of 2FOFC is just FOFC. And now what we're going to use is isomesh. Uh, isomesh, of course, is one of our PyMol commands, and we can view the, the isomesh commands uh, in Google on the uh, PyMol wiki, uh, such as here. And here we can see that we'll just start off with our uh, isomesh command, uh, the name, uh, the map, and the level, and it gives some examples here of how to go about using that. Uh, always worth having a look um, at the at the wiki here for all the different commands. 
Um, so let's just have a go at this. So what we've done is again we've 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 brought in our two density maps, but they don't really show anything until we put a mesh on them or a surface or whatever we want. And so ISO mesh is just a way of doing that. So we say we're going to make a new object, uh, and we're calling it den for density, and this is going to be the 2FOFC map at a sigma value of 1.5. So we'll stick that in, and there it comes in now at white as a as a white density. And again, we're just going to then color that blue. And there's our map. Now we're going to just do the exact same thing with the difference map. Oh, sorry. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the difference map, uh, except the only uh, difference here is that we're going to make a positive map and we're going to make a negative map. And obviously we're going to make them positive and negative respectively. And then the uh, positive map will make green and the negative map will make red. Uh, so there we are and now we can see these different areas of density here for example uh, according to the density map it thinks it's a little bit uh, too much density around this, uh, this sulfur atom here and that maybe this side chain isn't modelled correctly either and that maybe uh, this side chain here isn't modeled correctly and that maybe there's some density missing from here so maybe that should flip down there but you always get degrees of of error like this in all of them so these are always very busy because we have all of this electron density all over the place and it would make a lot of sense if we're trying to make a nice picture uh, to carve the electron density away from the areas that we're not so interested in so in order to do that, the first thing that we need to do is to make a selection. So here I'm just going to select chain A as an example. And then what we can use is our ISO mesh command again. Make a new object called, well I guess this should be mesh chain A carved. And it's going to be our, our 2FOFC map, uh, which is going to be displayed at 1.5 sigma around our selection chain A which we have just defined here and then we're going to carve uh, a two angstrom zone around the atoms uh, that we're interested in so if we stick this guy in uh, you can see that's now made us a new object here called mesh CA carved and what we'll do is we will colour that as soon as we've edited the name there there we are, we'll colour that into blue. And now what we'll do is we'll just remove our old meshes that we had here and just display this single carved mesh. And now you can see that we are only displaying the contour map that is uh, within two angstroms of chain A. And that cutoff is enough really to, to visualise uh, most of the electron density. You can see there's a few little fragments here and there where maybe we could make that cut off 1.8 or something so that we're not including some of those small fragments but largely um, there's there's not a lot of noise um, using that cut off there so there we are that's um, a way of using commands uh, that you can just copy and paste in in order to to display your electron density okay hope that helps Thanks very much for watching, hope that was useful. Please see the uh, longer tutorials which I've put together and are available. Uh, tutorial number one and tu tutorial number two are very good. And of course, uh, like and subscribe for more content. See you next time.